hi you guys so today is a new day welcome to the vlog i am on my way to the birthing center tour which i am eight minutes late so far i'm very excited about this and interested in the information i'm about to get so yeah let's see how today goes A medicated birth was just something that I thought was normal. I like thought you go to the hospital and you get whatever pain medication you need because everybody I knew did that. Yeah, I thought before I had it at first, I thought it was just going to be painful and automatically that I want pain meds. And Ariel, having experience with that on a daily basis, definitely asked that same question about, you know, oxygen tanks and um, various medications. I carry all of all the same equipment that I have at the birth center with me. I'm a mobile midwife. I'm a mobile labor and delivery ER team is how I like to think of myself. Midwives are trained to utilize other means than pharmaceuticals. And a normal labor, low risk woman, we're assuming she's not having surgery and that this is a normal process. So we want her to eat and drink and walk around. And so in the hospital setting, the only pain management you're gonna be offered is an epidural or pain medication. The hospitals just do not have the staff ratios to do one-on-one -on -one care that we provide. We're not gonna do anything that will make it more painful. Uh, for example, like giving Pitocin, which makes it unusually intense. But we're going to help them to do all the things that are going to make it easier to progress, like walking around or taking a shower or, or resting in the water in the tub. Even with all that aside, there's research that shows that just one-on-one -on -one support will help a woman get through the most difficult and most challenging times of labor. There's no epidural that can replace human touch. If you have a primary care, um, we don't take over like your primary care. We, we just have OB -GYN, yeah. yeah, so we take over like the OB side of things. Um, you'll come to us for your prenatal visits. Um, we send out for ultrasounds, but all of our labs we do in house. Are you able to fill out like uh, she can't work and stuff like that and has restrictions? Yeah, like, are are yeah. you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we do this as well. Okay. Um, you would bring your own food, or do you guys have food here? Or? You would bring your own. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So this is our staff break room area. Uh, we're kind of transforming it so that'll be like a coffee bar area. Yep. Back there we have our laundry facilities. It's not super exciting, but there's a couple washers, a couple dryers, and an auto fit to sterilize our equipment. Um, it's like they have in the hospitals, but ours is just a lot smaller. And then there are two restrooms on your right. And then on your left, this is our lab. Um, this is where you'll meet with a birth assistant before all of your prenatal and postpartum appointments. They would get your vitals, and this is where we would do any blood work that we needed as well. Mm. Rest assured, everything's in the room that we could ever possibly need. This is just for the excess. Um, on the other side is our lending library. We have a lot of different books available for you to check out, um, free of charge during your pregnancy. There's even a couple of midwife textbooks down there if you're interested. Oh, that's nice. Um, we don't limit the amount of books that you can check out during your pregnancy, it's just one at a time. Right, you guys can head in there and I'll follow behind you. Oh, uh, so y'all have the tub in here too. We got a TV in here. Oh, this is actually pretty nice. Is this closet? So that, it holds our like oxygen tanks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> it's like a little kitchen net and at least, like, yeah, if you're cool. in here, you can, like, be in the bed, too, versus figuring out where you're going to be at. Yeah, so this one's our serenity suite, and it's actually our smallest suite, um, but it's one of our two main suites. What kind of mattress do you guys need? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen a bird in tub in real life. He's able to be in tub, too? Mm-hmm. So they all have the same basic things in them. We have a bed, some extra seating for guests, um, a mini kitchen with a fridge, some sort of a birth tub, um, a bathroom with a shower, crib for baby if you choose to use it. There's a Bluetooth speaker if you want to play some music. And an oh, like up here? If you're into aromatherapy. Um, it's down on the... Oh, this yeah. thing right here? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. There's not much you need to bring, really. <laughs> Administrative office, and 
this one's our mandala suite. Yeah, this one's a little bit bigger. This one's a little couch. Yeah. Would this one have a tub too? Or? It is um, folded in the back behind the screen. But it'll just be like right here? Yep. So this one's actually our backup suite, so you won't be able to choose this one. We just use it for a lot of our storage. And mm -hmm. um, that's because it's missing one thing, and that's a shower. Mm -hmm. So we've never had to use this room before. The only reason that we would use it is if we already have two moms in labor and then a third mom comes in. So The other one had a shower in it? Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't take notice of that. <laughs> so do you guys accept people based off of their due dates? Yes. And that's how you can control how many are mm -hmm. here? Yeah. Does this one have a TV? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> TV over there. <laughs> Listen, we need that TV. <laughs> this is our main waiting waiting area. Um, so on a normal life, this is where you'll wait for your prenatal and postpartum appointments. We do have a little area in there for the kids. There's some toys, some coloring books, and we usually have something family friendly on the TV as well. So if um, you have young kids, you're more than welcome to bring Oh, them. this TV? Yep. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That was first baby. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, first one. Yeah. Um, so in the event that we have a mom in labor, this area gets left exclusively to the mom and her family. So the lights get dimmed, the TV gets turned off, and we take some toys in the back to kind of minimize the noise up here. Most of the time, we only just have one mom in labor here at a time. Most of the time, we don't have a mom in labor here. So, but when we do have a mom um, come in and she's in labor, then yeah, it's usually just one. Mm -hmm. Do they mostly do it at home? Or no, no, no. We just haven't had a lot or of them. Really. No. Oh, okay. They usually like come in and they're close to it or something. Yeah. Close to the, it, it sound like like I was in labor. I could call and come yeah. in and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Okay. Yeah. If she was by herself and I was away, would you guys be able to go get her and bring her here for delivery or just go to the house to deliver or stuff like that? Um, ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there like a hour thing like what if it's early in the morning like so we have a rotating call schedule so any time of the day you give birth they're gonna be here <laughs> okay okay mm, <laughs> oh this is a huge tub yeah. All right. i know this is the most choosed room already <laughs> This one's our garden suite. Um, it's our biggest suite, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it does still have all the basic things in them. We have a bed, a tub of some sort, though it may be a little bit prettier. Um, a mini kitchen with a fridge, some extra seating for your guests, a crib for baby if you choose to use it, and a shower with uh, a bathroom with a shower. There's no TV. No. <laughs> this looks like the biggest one. Mm -hmm. So it's either that, babe, you deal with having the small room with a TV or the bigger. It wasn't, that small. <laughs> it wasn't that small, but I said, I was trying to say smaller room. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I just water break? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, like I've always been kind of nervous about having natural birth but it's like 80 because 80 percent hospital because it's all i ever known mm -hmm. but trying to get more information about being natural and, it, and people have been discouraging and stuff like that so that's why i want to dive myself into the experience and see how it is and right. she has like the same medication currently so yeah i mean seeing the video and coming here it sounds it feels more peaceful than when we recently went to the hospital tour and it was kind of like, uh, you know, people, yeah. yeah. So, um, your ways of mitigating the pain, is the water and nitrous oxide, mm -hmm. yeah. is that like a laughing gas or? Yes, that's laughing gas, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's self-administered <laughs> by mom. Okay. So she, just like the epidural is too, that's self-administered too. Like if they want more, they press the button and stuff like that. Yeah. So if if like they would like some more nitrous, they just put the mask on and take it off as they please. That was the main thing you want to see for some reason. For some reason, he likes the idea of just laughing gas. I don't. Know. I think it's gonna be funny if you take the laughing gas. Lord. <laughs> um, just concentrate. Um, so both of our showers have a seat in them. 
and the birth balls you could take in the shower and the birth stool you could take in the shower as well we have a plastic one um so if that's where you're most comfortable you're more than welcome to just stay in there It's a blanket fee, so it okay. doesn't matter which tub. When I missed it, I came out. What? what the, night, the the pain medications, either the the tub or the nitrous oxide. Uh, one seventy five. One seventy five for on top of everything else. For both or or one seventy five for, for each. For okay. Each. Yeah. We ask that you pay for whatever you plan to use by thirty six weeks. Okay. Um, if you pay for it and then not using it in labor, you will get a full refund for it. Okay. 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 Our two midwife offices. Um, that's where you would meet with the midwife for your prenatal and postpartum appointments. You're more than welcome to take a look in there. You might see a midwife, so just say hi. I don't think nobody in here in the There's dark. In there. <laughs> I don't think they'll be in the dark. So this is where you would do like monthly exams, like yeah. the checks and stuff like that. So, I mean, it looks just as much as any other doctor's office, doctor's office but more intimate, I guess. Mm -hmm. She'll be working with the same people throughout the entire pregnancy. So, we have five midwives there now, and they are all on the rotating call schedule. So, during your prenatals, we get you in to see all of them. Mm -hmm. We kind of rotate you around just so you know whoever is going to be delivering you. Okay. So she'll know who, who will be Ultimately, the one that will deliver. Instead of the 10 we rotate through, it'll be... Well, just mainly, like, you'll get to know all of the midwives so that you'll, like, know who they are when they deliver you. Mm -hmm. So you won't know for sure who's going to deliver you, and you can't pick them. Um, but, like, if Kim ends up on call at your birth, you'll know who she is. Yeah. So okay. is so it... you won't deliver with a midwife that you've never met. Is it just the midwife, or is it just the midwife I can expect, or is there like a doula, or is it like assistants or other nurses so around? So the midwife and a birth assistant. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a student midwife as well. Mm -hmm. We have one, a senior student midwife, and then we have a junior student midwife. So I think they're um, trying to get more in their managing. Mm -hmm. So depending on who the midwife is, you might have up to three people in the room. Okay out of all the rooms which one you like the best that should be a question for you <laughs> i'm just asking you know what i was gonna say the first one the one with the tv yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. they got youtube on tv yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh you got youtube what you trying to watch our videos while in labor i don't know you like youtube that's all you watch yeah i know um it's not as intimidating as I thought it would be. It's more homey than I thought it would be. Oh, really? I thought it was just going to be a you know, big room, tell up here, tell up there, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we just came out of the birthing center mm -hmm. and I don't know, I kind of like it. Yeah, it's definitely different from the hospital, way different. I think it's more of a like, I'm not gonna say shock, but I think it's like so soothing and so calm that you like, but it has to be more, like it, it's just too simple. It's really, it really feels like it's really catered to you. It's like your own customizable birthing experience. Yeah, which is what I kind of want. Like I wanted it, to be a situation where I had the doctors, I had everybody that I could possibly need for the health and the safety of me and the baby. But at the same time, I, I, I don't want it to be dramatic. One thing I didn't know was that the Pitocin kind of helped create the pain to get your body regulating to push the body, to push the baby out. And I don't like the thought of that. Coming here, it makes me feel more at ease. It's still scary. But they they, they give you a lot of uh, things you didn't know about. It's like, like a huge glare. Like, uh, I didn't know 
um, about that umbil umbilical cord thing and keeping it attached to the baby for for so long mm -hmm. gives the baby 30% more blood. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a couple of main differences. Mm -hmm. One, not gonna get an epidural, so you just throw that out the window. Two, they have other options like the laughing gas, same option as at the hospital, and then the water birth, which they don't do at the hospital. But it, it gave some facts with that too, saying like it's 50% less painful with the water birth or something like that. It said 70%. 70%. And then it, it does sound cool with, you know, the baby being born in water, getting cleaned off. I want this to feel encouraging. We went through this whole fight of trying to conceive and now we conceive and I want to be one with my husband and with the experience and I want to feel good about it. Even though it's about me and the baby, I, I want to know that my husband's comfortable too. And this tour was a lot different. It took the same amount of time. We were here for an hour and a half, but it was just us versus the hospital. There was like 15 other couples. This was mostly us asking a lot of questions and us guiding the tour. I think it seems like the route that you want, not just with the, the birth of the our child, but the whole pregnancy process you know, being scared and stuff before, how does this make you feel now? This makes me feel a lot calmer because it feels like there's a lot more help. It feels like they're a lot more specialized. Mm. This is all they do, this is all they know, and they don't take on as many couples and babies as a hospital. Mm -hmm. So you get more time with them and things like that, so. It was like everything asked, it was like, it's up to you. Like, yeah, yeah. It's up to you. Can we film? Suck if you guys you. want to, you know. Like, can we do this? Can we use this? Can, can we have uh, as many people in here as we want? I mean, if you want to, but if it's going to be distracting, you know, they can sit in the other room. Like, so. <laughs> the response was every time, what well, it's up to you, whatever is not going to be distracting to the mom. Yeah. Was their response to everything. And to me, it was kind of like shocking and unintentionally gives me the reins back in, in control in the situation. And it feels like they're gonna be all about you and the baby and not just the baby. Yeah, so even if they like people bothering them, it'll be like, oh, they can see the stress in me and they'll, they'll do things accordingly to that versus like being pressured into something. And I think that's how things has been in life. Like people in general in society make you feel obligated to do things that you may not necessarily want. And they always say that the biggest responsibility you can ever have is having a child. No matter even if I do decide to do a hospital, I just want to feel empowered. In the experience that we felt going into the hospital tour, it felt Underwhelming. Yeah, very, that, very good. Babe. It felt very underwhelming. I was expecting uh, so much more. Underwhelming. And I was so disappointed. And here, even though a, a bunch of questions wasn't asked, it was kind of like I immediately understood what their process was. Yeah. And didn't need to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. It seems like the most questions you would need to ask is about billing. Pretty much the same, exactly the same what we would be spending in the hospital. But if you want to use the tub or the nitrous oxide, those are each 175 Yeah. additional. So, so it's not a huge expense where it's like, okay, I definitely can't do this. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit intimidating to hear like, okay, that's extra fees, but I'm pretty sure even if we did the hospital, there would be extra fees. And then if you don't end up using some of the stuff, then you get your money back, so. Like we know for sure, we go this route, we're doing water birth, like without a doubt. So we know that it will be the 240 plus. Um, 175. 175. So. That's one other thing I noticed, like the lights in this place are like, like dim, calm, but in a hospital, you got all these bright lights and Hospital smells. It mm. didn't, didn't smell like a hospital in there, y'all. It smelled. No, it didn't. <laughs> it was smell good. Like it smelled like a house. And the chances are, it's just gonna be you giving birth and not other moms giving birth uh, with the way that they schedule things. So. And even if we go this route and there is another mother, I don't think I'll be bothered by that. But two, also, I think even if there was another family, then most likely our families might entertain 
yeah, it's it'd a twine yeah, it'd be, and it'd be fine. I think the biggest thing is going to be trying to explain this to without getting our the, friends and family without getting the <laughs> You sure? Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. I don't think you should. Yeah. I think. But I think once I think once they are here and they see everything, then they'll they'll get why we did it. Yeah. Really, at this point in my mind, as we're talking, it's really just the fear of the unknown. Yeah. To not do it versus because everything sounds good. I mean, you can hear us. Like, duh. Like, do it. Like you said so yourself do it it's just like we don't know it's like because no one else did it and it can really be people in the back of my mind who i know would be like don't do it you can't do it she's always sick she's always this and that but then again like a lot of people don't talk about their experience so you don't even know what their experience was in the hospital yeah like they could be sugarcoating a lot of stuff that you know they wish would have went differently or maybe they don't even know that you know didn't even know that there was this option so they have nothing to compare it to mm -hmm. i can say in my life experiences i never met or heard of anybody doing a natural birth yeah especially within the black community that i'm around yeah so i think if i went this route i think it can be enlightening for other people to see right that it's not bad so i think it could be beneficial after the fact i mean it's definitely something i had never uh thought about before we got you know pregnant and everything and i mean my mind changed a little bit i was more so hospital 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 but i mean all the things that you want it seems like you'll get it more here you know i was ready to go with them at the end but i knew we needed to come you know do a talk and i kind of felt like that too which in the end i was like it kind of did feel like like duh clarissa just like set the appointment like duh mm -hmm. but i just i like to have that communication with him just to make sure like he understands what we're doing because he's a part of the process too yeah regardless because everybody want to ask like what did happen in case of emergency what happened like we'll go to the hospital and like it kind of like like i don't want to live my life in fear fear of you know well, what if this happens what if that happens you know if it happens it happens but you know in the meantime we're gonna go this route hope that it doesn't happen i almost want to do this 100 percent just for what we said earlier you know not living in fear and living in faith i think this would cause us to be more faithful <laughs> in our beliefs in ourselves and our body. It'll be a totally different, totally different experience. So yeah, I guess we'll either see you later. If not, this is all for this particular video and we will see you in the next one. See you guys.